So restructuring is not a very new term, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you have heard of uh, this term restructuring. It's a very, very popular term. And uh, when you look at this topic, restructuring, there are the two questions you want to ask yourself. The first question is why restructure? Why do organizations restructure? And the other question is why restructure? So there are two pertinent questions that you need to ask yourself. Why restructure and how do organizations restructure? Now, many times when we hear of restructuring, we start imagining a company is in financial problems. Many times when you hear these and these companies restructuring, these and this company is going through a turnaround, turnaround strategy, turnaround process, people start imagining that the company is in financial problems. Fine, that could be a reason. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons why firms restructure is if a firm is in distress. Uh, we talk about financial distress, where an organization has challenges, financial problems. They cannot be able uh, to meet their current financial obligations. They cannot be able to pay salaries. They cannot be able to meet other financial obligations. That could be a reason, yes. But I want to, in order to inform you that it's not, it's not all the time that firms that restructure are in financial problems. That's one thing that uh, should be very, very clear from the onset. It is not all firms that are in distress. Even companies doing well, companies which are profitable, uh, can restructure for them to have a competitive advantage, to be able to have a competitive hedge. Uh, I know you guys are doing strategy, governance and ethics, and you know one of the aspects that organizations focus on is to have a competitive advantage, uh, to be able to maximize profit, to be able to maximize value. Yeah, so restructuring can take various forms and organizations can do uh, various activity uh, for purposes of ensuring that they attain their stated financial objective. At the end of the day, an organization will want to create value for the owner. An organization will want to create value for the owner. An organization will want to maximize profit. An organization will want to have a higher value of their share and so forth and so on. So it's not that a firm has to be in distress. It's not that a firm has to be in distress for it to go through what we are calling restructuring. It can be done by companies which are very profitable. Uh, it can also be done by companies which are financial challenges. Uh, for reasons which, uh, of course, management is, is, could be aware of. Now, restructuring can be a simple exercise. Eh? Uh, restructuring can be very simple, like change of the job specifications, the job design, change of reporting pattern, cost cutting, you know. It can be very, very simple, but it could also be complex. Restructuring can be complex. It could take the form of mergers and acquisitions, that's one of the topics that we have done, ladies and gentlemen, mergers and acquisition. Uh, I want to tell you that it's a complex form of restructuring. Mergers and acquisition is a complex form of restructuring. Eh? It's a complex form of restructuring. There is also restructuring through capital reorganization, uh, the change of capital structure, uh, maybe conversion of debt to equity, equity from one form to the other, from one form to the other. Uh, we refer to it as restructuring through capital reorganization, okay? Or sometimes what we call financial restructuring. So uh, the other question then we need to ask ourselves, the other question which you want to ask ourselves, what can you look at in an organization for you to confirm that the company required to go through a restructuring? There are certain signs. There are certain indicators. There are certain popular signs, or rather indicators that a firm required to go through restructuring. Okay, before I look at those signs, before I mention some of those signs, let me again say generally that restructuring uh, is an exercise that involves redefining, redefining the certain piece. Peace, redefining products, redefining policies, redefining processes, redefining programs, 
redefining people. And if you check all those are those are P's, those are P's, eh? Kiangalia Mzuri, it was all any piece. Restructuring can affect products. Uh, you know, changes that affect products. Just a minute. Yeah, so restructuring is basically bringing about changes, and uh, some of these changes could affect the farm's products, can, can affect policies, changes that affect policies, changes that affect processes, changes which affect programs, changes which affect people, and so forth and so on. Uh, so if you look at it broadly, in each of those aspects, if we are to dig deeper, what changes affect products are very many. What changes that affect policies are there? What changes that affect processes? What changes that affect programs? Changes which affect people, maybe retrenching, uh, uh, training, and so forth and so on. Yeah, so uh, this exercise can be a simple exercise, but it could also be complex. It can also be a complex exercise. Now, what do you look at in an organization to confirm that a firm require the restructuring? This is what we call the symptoms or signs of restructuring. If you check there, I think I've already shared this. One of these is operational signs, operational signs. And I've listed some of these are operational signs. When a company is unable to pay salaries, for example, production breakdowns, delays in supply chain, the use of outdated technology, lack of clear defined roles, high staff turnover, continuous reduction in employee productivity, decline in market development efforts, high assets manufacture repair costs, and comfortable relations with external stakeholders. All those are operational. Uh, signs classified as operational. We have strategic signs. I know you guys are doing strategic management, and I know that uh, you have gone through a number of strategies, business strategies, corporate strategies, and I know you guys uh, have, have a lot, have a lot uh, to share. Unfortunately, I'm not with you there to ask, but some of these strategic indicators are more obvious, like reduced market share. When an organization market share has gone down, it's a sign that the farm is not doing very well. Growing mismatch between strategy formulation by owners and management. I know that the subject of strategy formulation, uh, strategy implementation and strategy control, those are issues. I know you guys are focused in much more detail. If there's a mismatch between strategy formulation and of course, uh, that might not be very good. Uh, imbalances in value driving activities, uh, lack of clear vision and mission. I know from your strategic uh, management perspective, you guys know that the vision and mission are very, very important. A vision statement, a mission statement uh, gives organizational direction, uh, tells you where you are and where you want to be, uh, perhaps. Uh, at a future date. So if there is lack of clear vision and mission, that tells you there's a problem. No written strategies. Okay. Uh, there is also financial indicators. The other category of uh, indicators or signs that a firm require the structuring are financial indicators, failure to meet short-term liabilities, raising operational costs and financing costs, falling share price in the market without near uh, future scope of correction, continue loss making, growing cost of operations, imbalances between core costs and support costs, increased costs in the value chain, and so forth and so on. Those are financial indicators. There are other general indicators like global recessions, sustained recessions, and shrinking markets, increase, increase replacement of skill employees and favorable macroeconomic changes, uh, substantial change in government policies towards taxes and other business policies, yeah, and so forth and so on. Uh, these are some of the signs, some of the indicators which I've already uh, shared with you. Now, when, when designing a restructuring program, uh, uh, there are a number of questions that one you need to ask yourself. Uh, the number of questions, of course, which you need to ask yourself. And 
uh, one of the popular questions is why restructure? Is it because a company is doing poorly? Is it, is it strategic move? At what cost should it be done for the benefit to be attractive? The shareholders, who should be involved? In the process of restructuring, do you involve your existing management or do you find other professionals to go through that exercise? Uh, uh, should it be done in one stage or should it be done in phases? Like if you are laying off staff, for example, do you do it once or do you uh, do it in phases, you know, and so forth and so on. Uh, so some of those are questions which uh, perhaps uh, you'll need to ask yourselves. Now, when you look at the document that I gave you, uh, I've explained a number of uh, issues. I've explained a number of issues, but I, I wanted uh, to draw your attention to a lot of stories here, which uh, you guys will be, be going through on your own. A lot of stories, but I, I wanted to draw your attention to uh, three aspects here. Yeah. Are you guys seeing my document, by the way? I'm not sure whether you're seeing my document. Yes. Yeah, there's something here. Uh, the document that I shared with you is a, is, is a note that I'm trying, it's research I've done, of course, for my purpose of my book, which I'm still writing. And uh, the, the information I've not I've not been able to organize it very well. Uh, you'll, you'll bear with me this. I'm here to organize the information of the topics take shape. But if you check there, uh, I'm saying somewhere there that corporate structuring takes place when there is any change in capital structure. You can see that sentence, eh? Or ownership. Change of operations, that is business strategy. The change of core business assets. Sale of assets or workforce management staff reduction of a company carried out the intention of improving value of the firm, increasing profitability. I think those are issues which I began talking about at the start. I improve value, increase profit, enhance shareholders wealth or generally positive cash flows. I'm sure that a firm has positive cash flows. Thus corporate structure result in changes in, see I'm talking of capital structure, that is capital reorganization, restructuring through capital reorganizations, change of operations, change of core business assets and workforce management with the intention of improving the firm's value, enhancing shareholders' wealth, reviving the company which is in distress. Now, corporate structuring can be categorized as follows. We have financial restructuring, there is portfolio reconstruction, or rather financial reconstruction, portfolio reconstruction, and there is what we refer to as organizational reconstruction. Uh, I wish to talk about each of these. Now, financial reconstruction uh, is restructuring through uh, capital reorganization. These are changes which affect the firm's capital structure. I know you guys uh, are familiar when I talk about the uh, capital structure, uh, that is the last topic which I'm going to embark on, uh, advanced financing as issues of capital structure, which we're going to talk about. But I know from your section three work, you guys are aware that uh, capital structure is the mix of the various long-term capital, mix of debt, the mix of preference share capital, the mix of equity. That combination is capital structure. So financial reconstruction is a restructuring that affects farm's capital structure, changes which affect the farm's capital structure. And many a time that this can be done through maybe conversion of debt to equity. That one way in which financial reconstruction can be done, conversion of debt to equity. I know you guys are aware that debt is convertible. Conversion of preference share capital into equity. Conversion of equity from one form to another like uh, bonus issues that involve capitalizing of reserves. Uh, you know, you can capitalize your reserves. Conversion of debt from one form to another, maybe long-term debt, short-term debt, long-term debt, and so forth and so on. And, and these are done for various reasons. Uh, you can see one of the reasons here is to reduce debt to manageable levels. 
uh, to stabilize the company so that investors can inject new equity, uh, to reorganize corporate capital structure, to enable core business units to operate effectively, to survive a recession, to remove a source of cash flow drainage, to avoid liquidation of the company. Uh, if continuity of operations is more beneficial, of course, revalue assets of a company which may have been overvalued or undervalued and so forth and so on. Yeah, so I may take the form of internal schemes or external schemes. Uh, this is what I've been telling you. Financial reconstruction debt, equity conversion, equity to debt conversion, leveraged recapitalization. When you, when you bring in the issue of leverage is debt, you know, recapitalizing. Uh, leverage recapitalization that involves share buyback. Yeah, so it's also very, very possible to repurchase back your standing shares. Those shares which a farm had been had issued, raised capital, uh, farms can repurchase. Leveraged buyout. This is a buying an existing farm which is financed using more of that. Yeah, leveraged buyout. Uh, okay. Where uh, management of a farm can acquire, can acquire, or private investors can acquire a farm and uh, finance the acquisition of a company using more of that. Uh, okay. And so forth and so on. So these stories I've already shared with them. Uh, conversion of equity from one form to another, conversion of debt from one form to another, and so forth and so on. All these affect, all these affect the farm's capital structure. So when I talk about changes affecting the farm's capital structure, uh, that is what we are referring to as financial reconstruction. Okay, there, there, there are a few computations which uh, you guys are required to appreciate how a financial reconstruction and affect share price and how the financial reconstruction can affect weighted average cost of capital. Sometimes back when I was going through the PEM, capital asset pricing model, I think I told you that uh, one of the applications of the capital asset pricing model is to be able to assess the impact of the financial reconstruction, uh, to assess the impact of the financial reconstruction on the farm share price or to assess the impact of a financial reconstruction on weighted average cost of capital of the farm. Uh, so these changes that affect capital structure uh, can impact on share price and may impact on the weighted average cost of capital. Uh, this is the point that uh, you can see that I'm discussing there. This is a point to which you guys can see that I'm discussing there. Please switch over your videos, eh? Because this affects service area that I'm working with. Would you kindly switch off all your videos, eh? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you check, if you check somewhere there, I'm saying if financial reconstruction scheme is accepted by lenders and shareholders, it results in a change in the capital structure. Let me tell you that. The impact or a change in capital structure, that is financial reconstruction, on the value of a farm can be assessed by the change in the growth rate, risk, and the share price of the farm. Change in the growth rate, risk, I think systematic, uh, specifically is systematic risk. The change in the growth rate, the change in systematic risk, the change in share price. So change in the growth rate due to financial reconstruction. This can be determined uh, by applying the Gordon's growth approximation equation. You guys are aware of this equation, eh? Are you aware of this equation? Okay, we'll go on the valuation models. The equation is okay, Mali. G is equal to return on equity times retention ratio. So, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yes. Yeah, so, and I know from your ratio analysis, Return on equity is net income over equity capital. Eh? Retention ratio is one minus the dividend payout. Eh? So uh, it's possible to use that formula to find the growth rate before 
the growth rate before the financial construction and the growth rate after financial construction. Eh? Yeah, so the growth rate before and after the financial construction. In, in a situation where uh, it's not possible to compute return on equity, no net income, no equity, then it's assumed that return on equity is equal to the cost of equity. Let me please repeat there. You're looking for the growth rate before and after the financial construction. Now, in a situation where you cannot compute return on equity, there is no net income and there is no equity, then it's assumed that return on equity is equal to cost of equity. Which cost of equity now shall be estimated using the framework of the capital asset price model? So where it's not possible to compute return on equity, then assume that return on equity is equal to cost of equity, which cost of equity shall be captured using the framework of the capital asset price model. Now, which cost of equity are we looking for? Is cost of equity over levered firm? The cost of equity over levered firm using the capital asset pricing model. So at the back of your mind, just have it that way, that we need the growth rate before and after the financial reconstruction, change in systematic risk due to financial reconstruction. Now, systematic risks, these are the non reverse fiber risks. We went through this when we were going through a PEM. And uh, by the way, the assumption here is that a relationship exists between capital structure and the systematic risk. That a relationship exists between capital structure and the systematic risk. That relationship is explained by a model we call Hamada model. That relationship uh, is explained by a model we refer to as the Hamada model. What did talk at Pia Gidogo? It's assumed that there is a relationship between capital structure and the systematic risk. You guys are aware that the systematic risk are those risks which are non diversifiable Systematic risks are measured by a better, better factor, the better coefficients. We discussed this in detail when I was going through CAPEM. When you start bringing in systematic risks, then quickly we will introduce the subject of better. Now, according to Robert Amada, there's a finance scholar by the name of Robert Amada. Robert Amada came up with a model referred to as the Amada model. According to Robert Amada, a relationship exists between capital structure and systematic risks. Such that the higher the amount of debt, according to Robert Amada, the higher the amount of debt in the firm's capital structure, the higher the systematic risk. The higher the amount of debt in the firm's capital structure, the higher the systematic risks. Uh, the Hamada model is given by BEU equal to EEL one plus P over S one minus T. This is the model by Robert Amada. BEU is equal to BEL divided by one plus B over S one minus T, where BEL is better of equity of unlevered firm. BEU is better of equity of unlevered firm. BEL is better of equity of a levered firm. Uh, B is the amount of debt or proportion of debt. S is the amount of equity or proportion of equity. Then T is corporation tax rate. One thing you can see from this model this is a component of the capital structure. Uh, when you talk about debt and you talk about equity, that's a component of the capital structure. So if you rearrange the equation, then BEL is equal to BEU plus the bracket one plus B over S one minus T. 
if you rearrange the equation, if you make beta of equity of a levered firm, the subject of the formula, it becomes like that. So levered equity beta is equal to unlevered equity beta. This unlevered equity beta is what sometimes we call asset beta. The beta coefficient of equity of unlevered firm is sometimes referred to as the asset beta. This is, uh, you can see, B over S, the financial restructuring. Restructuring through capital reorganization affects B and affects S. So that brings in the question of the capital structure. So according to Robert Hamada, the higher the amount of debt in the firm's capital structure, the higher the systematic risk. As you increase the value of B, uh, if B increases from 30%, you know, if, if B is 30%, S is 70. If B goes up to 40%, uh, then of course, S will be 60. If B is 50%, S is 60. Those are changes that affect the capital structure. So according to Robert Amada, the higher the amount of debt, the higher the systematic risk. So we need to check, compute levered equity beta, uh, BEL, before the financial restructuring, and BEL after the financial restructuring. This beta is the one that we take to CAPEM. That beta is the one that we take to the capital asset price model to find the cost of equity of a levered firm. Uh, Risk-free rate plus BEL, expected return of the market portfolio minus risk-free rate. Once you have used the Amada model to look for a beta of equity of a levered firm, of course, given the beta of equity of a levered firm, given the ratio of debt to equity and the given corporation tax rate, you can find a levered equity beta, then proceed to the capital asset price model. Proceed to the capital asset price model and find the cost of equity and find the cost of equity, uh, determine the cost of equity uh, of a levered firm. So that cost of equity of a levered firm is the one that is assumed to be equal to return on equity. In the absence of, in the absence of return on equity, then we assume that return on equity is equal to cost of equity. Return on equity is equal to cost of equity. For purposes of establishing G, which is return on equity times retention ratio. This return on equity is the one I'm talking about. If you cannot determine it, then it is assumed it's equal to the cost of equity. Which cost of equity shall be worked out using the capital asset pricing model? So you bring in the Amada model, find levered beta, and move on to the capital asset pricing model to look for the cost of equity. Uh, these are stories which uh, I think uh, you see we are sharing here. Change in systematic risk due to financial reconstruction. The equity bit of a farm is determined as follows. Now, equity beta, that is beta of equity of a levered firm, equal to asset beta. Asset beta is beta of equity of a levered firm. E plus D, one minus T divided by E. If you look at this formula, it's not different from the one I've given you. Uh, except that uh, D, 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 you know, you to B. E, the S, I'm going to vote it. I couldn't have to Kiangalia. B E L is equal to B E E U. Uh, put in bracket. E over E is one plus D over E one minus T. It is the same formula that I talked about. So we need to look for uh, the levered equity beta. Uh, if you wish to find the asset beta, no problem. You can rearrange the equation uh, to express it that way. Okay, now. You can see I have a small example here where I'm saying a company's existing debt to equity ratio is 0.4, asset beta 0.75, tax rate 30%. That means the current equity beta, the current equity levered beta. So you can see the levered equity beta is equal to unlevered beta 0.75. I told you asset beta is the levered equity beta one plus. In that formula, you can see I had said B over S. 
B over S, the ratio of there to equity, D divided by E or B divided by S is equal to 0 0.4. In that previous formula that I gave you earlier, let me go back a bit. This is what I'm saying here. B over S is the ratio of debt to equity, 0 0.4. B divided by S is the ratio of debt to equity. So debt divided by equity is 0 0.4. In 0 0.75, one plus uh, 0 0.4, then of course you bring in the issue of tax. If you introduce the issue of tax, yeah, so 0 0.4 is B divided by S. So that means 0 0.96 is the levered. That is the levered equity beta. If I had risk-free rate and I know the return of the market portfolio, then I can find the cost of equity of a levered firm using the capital asset pricing model. Eh? The company decided to undergo a financial reconstruction. Of course, now this is levered equity beta for financial reconstruction. How about decide to undergo a financial reconstruction during which it will repurchase its shares using borrowed debt? This will change uh, debt to, it will change its debt to equal ratio to 1.33. Debt to equal ratio. So it will come down from 1.4, 1.33. The impact of the equity beta can be determined as follows. So I'm again recombute, I'm again recomputing the levered equity beta, which is equal to asset beta. 0.75, one plus, uh, apo kuna typographical error, apo. Yoni plus, apo ni plus. So what has only changed is uh, the ratio of debt to equity, 1.3, it has come down. Before financial reconstruction, oh sorry, sorry, it has gone up. Before the financial reconstruction, the ratio of debt to equity was 0 0.4. It has gone up to 1.33. So asset beta, 0 0.75, one plus the ratio of debt to equity, 1.33. So it goes up to 1.45. Uh, so that should give us a better coefficient of equity of a levered farm. So what are we seeing here? You're seeing, can help you observe that the addition of more debt has increased the firm's systematic risk. The change in the share price due to financial reconstruction. Yeah, so this can be done using the dividend growth model. Now, one thing that you can see is that uh, we have established the beta of equity before and after the financial reconstruction. It's possible to find the growth rate before and after the financial reconstruction, after which you can find the share price before and after the financial reconstruction uh, using the dividend growth model. Using the dividend growth model. You guys know the dividend growth model? Uh, the P naught equal to D naught bracket one plus G, one plus G uh, divided by, uh, you can divide by, yeah. So it, it is possible then to, for us to look for the share price before and after the financial, uh, before and after the financial reconstruction. Yeah, so if you bring in the dividend growth model, which I know you guys are familiar with, it's possible to determine, it's possible to determine uh, the share price, the share price before and after financial reconstruction.
Okay, I don't know. I don't know. It's refusing for me to bring it in. But I know you guys are familiar with the dividend growth model. I know you know P naught is D naught one plus G divided by K S minus G. Divided by K S minus G. Document which I have seems to be hanging. I don't know why. So you can see where we added to. Uh, you can see basically where we added to. Once you have established the growth rate, now of course, you need to look for the growth rate using return on equity times retention ratio. Uh, in the absence of return on equity, look for the cost of equity using the capital asset pricing model. But for you to arrive at the cost of equity, you have to start from the Amada model, find the levered equity beta. Once you have found the levered equity beta, let's go to CAPM, find the cost of equity. That cost of equity of a levered firm is assumed to be the same as return on equity. Uh, then find the growth rate. D not most recent dividend will know the cost of equity of a levered firm. So we can find growth rate before and after the financial reconstruction. Find uh, the cost of equity before and after the financial reconstruction then share price before and after the financial reconstruction. Uh, I'll share with you an illustration. I don't have an illustration now, but uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I get you an illustration on that so that we can demonstrate on that. Eh? Uh, so I'll, I'll check if I'll be able to find uh, an illustration on that area, which illustration uh, I'll share with you to be able to see how to go through that process. Okay, so let me mention portfolio reconstruction and the other one. So I, I promise I'll get an illustration on that so that we can uh, confirm how it goes. Now, the other is portfolio reconstruction. Uh, this is a form of restructuring that uh, uh, affects the farm's asset mix. Uh, it is a business reorganization strategy that uh, involves changes that affect the farm's asset mix. Uh, we like, like use the word ways of unbundling a farm, uh, ways of unbundling a farm. There are various forms of portfolio reconstruction, like the investments, the merger, sell-off, spin-off, equity carve-out, management buyout, liquidation, management buy-in. All these are ways of unbundling a company. They're all ways of unbundling, unbundling a company. And these are done to improve performance of the existing company, to enhance value of the existing company, to dispose of uh, uh, underperforming or non-performing assets, improve functioning uh, of divisions and so forth and so on. So I've explained various forms, easy, uh, uh, the investment, the opposite of investment, the merger is the opposite of a merger. Uh, we have sell off, you know, uh, dispose of certain uh, business segments which are not very profitable. Uh, spin off uh, involves creation of one or more new fully independent companies from the existing company without transferring ownership to outsiders. Uh, creating units which are autonomous, uh, fully independent units which are autonomous, uh, liquidation, that's normal winding up management, buy out, there is management buy in, there is equity carve out, and so forth and so on. So please, those ones you can be reading, various forms of portfolio reconstruction. Then finally, there is organizational reconstruction, and this is uh, changes that affect the capital structure. I mean, sorry, sorry organizational structure, changes which affect the firm's organizational structure, changes that affect management hierarchy, workforce realignment, corporate governance, decision making, supply chains, and so forth and so on. And these are done for various reasons, to make process less complicated, remove production bottlenecks, reduce wastage of time or material, improve coordination between various departments, enhance the overall performance of the company. These stories, ladies and gentlemen, are stories which uh, you can be going through. But uh, when I meet you, 
I will want to bring an illustration on this area of uh, financial reconstruction. Uh, the other stories, you can be looking at them. I'll get an illustration. I'll get an illustration which I'll share with you uh, on how to analyze the impact, the impact of financial restructuring on share price and also on weighted average cost of capital. Uh, I, I know you're aware that I'm unwell. I don't talk, I don't want to talk a lot. Why do some men is well in the tabuta on the analysis on that impact of the financial restructuring on Shepard? And I think it is there in your past paper. One of the most recent cities. Which city was it? Anybody who can who is keen enough? November? Question number one. November 2018, question one B. Yes. Yeah, kindly, I want you to be looking at, look, just be looking at it, that question. Eh? I'll, I'll, I'll check if I can, I can be able to do an answer of that question or if I have a solution of a, 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 a similar, similar one, if I check. I'm sure I should be able to find some answer on that. Eh? Pardon, please. Hello. Which question? Which, which question? I don't have the question paper, but I'm informed it's 2018. Someone no, has November 2018. Oh, thank you. Yeah, please be looking at it. Eh? Okay, so allow me to stop there. I'll be looking at it, eh? that question. Eh? Okay. Just hold up what I've, I've already talked about and you can be attempting. I'll, I'll find a way to give you an answer for the question. Eh? Okay, so let me stop at that for now. Those, those of us who are uh, from town campus, I'm aware there's an issue I've not talked about on uh, uh, the money market hedge. I, I'll, 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 I'll convene a meeting, a small meeting, and I'll, show, I'll take you through. But you already have the notes. I hope you have been going through the notes. Eh? Just be going through the notes. I'll convene a meeting and I'll share. I'll discuss on that aspect. Eh? Okay, so that winds up my meeting for now.